Okay, so welcome back to this video uh, on a uh, really beautiful problem involving joint probability distributions, in this case joint discrete uh, probability distributions. Uh, so the problem is that we have this chicken that's laying eggs, and she can lay, um, she can lay any non-negative integer value of eggs, and uh, when she's laid those eggs, uh, some of them hatch, some of them don't, and the probability that an individual egg will hatch is um, given by a little p, which is the probability that a single specific egg will hatch. Okay, uh, so um, our problem is to find out uh, these, um, these um, well, we want to find out the probability distribution of x, we want to find out the PMF uh, for x, we want to find out the probability that big X is equal to little x, and we want to find out the probability that big Y is equal to some little y, where big X is the random variable assigning to each outcome the number of the eggs that she laid that hatched, and Y is the number of eggs that failed to hatch of the ones that she laid. Okay, so we'll start off with X. And the thing is that we we know some more information. This gives us some more information because this tells us if we know the number of eggs the chicken has laid, it tells us how uh, the probability, uh, how um, the random variable x and the random variable y will be distributed. And let me discuss that further. So if little n is fixed, so if the number of eggs the chicken has laid is fixed, and we just now consider, so uh, I'm now considering taking out uh, one of these blocks here. So the hen has laid n eggs. I'm just pulling that out and now considering it as a whole probability space. And later what we'll do is apply the law of co total probability where we will use conditional probability uh, just as we are. Well, but now we're just considering what is um, what is probability. We want to consider probability conditional on n having happened because this tells us exactly how uh, the random variable x and the random variable y will be distributed if you condition on big n being a fixed number. So we are saying that the number of eggs the chicken has ha has laid uh, is equal to little n. So we've said, we've had this chicken, she's laid her eggs, she's done that job, now she's sitting broody on them, and we're uh, waiting to see how many she actually hatches and how many fail to hatch. Okay, uh, so she's laid uh, little n eggs, and how many possibilities are there for uh, what can happen next? Well, um, the first one could hatch, the second one could hatch, uh, the third one could fail to hatch, etc. All the way down, you'd have to tell me what happened uh, to all little n of them. Uh, so uh, that means that since each egg can either hatch or not hatch, there are two to the n uh, possibilities. Okay, uh, so uh, we also know that the probability, little p, is the probability that a single egg will hatch. So probability single egg will hatch. Okay. So now what we can do is we can think about the random variables big X and big Y acting on this probability space here. Uh, for now, we'll just think about big X um, because that's the one we were going to start with. Uh, and it can ascribe to each, each of these, each of these outcomes, how many eggs actually hatched. And uh, the way, uh, so what are the possibilities that it can take on? Either zero can hatch, which is the event that absolutely none of them hatch, poor old hen. Uh, she clearly didn't have a cockerel. Um, uh, and then there's the, um, the event that all of the n, all of the n eggs hatch, i.e. you get uh, n hatches. The hens done very, very well in that case. But it can't go over n. You can't hatch out more chicks than you had eggs. Okay, uh, so, uh, well, actually, I don't know. Can two chicks come out of the same egg? I don't know that. Uh, but uh, 0, 1, 2, and it can take on any value in between. So it can go all the way up to uh, this little n. And what we want to know is what's the probabil uh, probability distribution of uh, this x value given that we know the n. So we're conditioning uh, the random variable that on the fact that we know little n. And then what we'll do is uh, say that this applies for all of these individual cases, and we'll use the law of total probability to work out the probability, uh, to work out how it's distributed over the entire probability space. Okay, uh, so uh, this is binomially distributed, and the way to see that is that we can set up random variables at little. Uh, well, we can set up random variables x one, which is going to map you onto zero or one, and it's going to map you onto zero if your first egg, if the first egg hatches, it's going to map you onto a one, and if your first egg doesn't hatch, it'll map you onto a zero. So x one is going to map each outcome in this uh, probability space here. It's going to map it onto zero if the first egg hatches, if first egg hatches, hatches, um, and it's going to map it onto 1 if the first egg doesn't hatch, first egg doesn't hatch, 
Okay. Now, uh, we can set up similarly, we can set up more random variables, so I can set up x2, which is again going to map you onto 0 and 1, it's going to map you uh, an outcome onto 0 if the second egg ha doesn't hatch, and it's going to map you onto 1 if the second egg does hatch, and you can go all the way down to uh, xn, which is going to map you onto 0 or 1, and the outcome is going to depend on the uh, nth egg, so you'll get ascribed a 0 if the nth egg doesn't hatch, and you'll get ascribed a 1 if the nth egg does hatch. Okay, and these are all uh, uh, these are all independent and identically distributed Bernoulli distributions. So xi is Bernoulli distributed uh, with uh, probability parameter p. So the probability that you get a 1 is going to be p because you're asking what's the probability that the first egg hatches, and that is p. Uh, and the probability that it doesn't hatch is 1 minus p, which we might call q. Okay, uh, so what you then end up with is um, you note that the big variable, uh, at, well, the big random variable x is actually equal to the sum of all of these other ones, x1 plus x2 plus all the way down to x uh, little n. Okay, uh, so uh, that's because this one will ascribe your 1 if the first egg hatched, this one will ascribe your 1 if the second egg hatched. So by adding up all the values here, uh, you watch, it will actually equal the total number of eggs which hatched, which is what this uh, random variable big X is. So if we want uh, the probability that big X is equal to some little x, let's say, so one of these values between 0 and n, it's actually equal to the probability that big x1 uh, plus big x2 plus all the way down to big xn is equal to that little x. Okay, so how many ways are there uh, to get uh, little x from these n big x, uh, big xn, well, how many ways, this is some value between 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. What we want to know is how many ways are there to distribute n things, um, uh, well, x things among these n uh, random variables, because these random variables, remember, can only take on values of 0 and 1. So what we want to know is how many different ways are there of, how many different possibilities are there of ascribing zeros and ones to these in order that it will add up to x. Okay, uh, so we want to know how many outcomes, how many outcomes are there over here uh, which satisfy the fact that all of these Bernoulli random, Bernoulli, the sum of these n uh, independent and identically distributed uh, Bernoulli distributions sums up to x. So let me just uh, say what I mean by that. So x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn has to equal x, but these all equal either 0 or 1, so how are we going to get this x? Well, we could have, this one could be 0, then we could add 1 up here, uh, x3 could also equal 1, etc. And what you would have to have is you'd have to have x1s, so there would have to be x1s, and there would have to be uh, n minus x zeros. Okay, uh, so basically what we're asking is how many ways are there of assigning x1s and n minus x zeros amongst these n random variables here? So we're asking how many permutations are there of x1s and n minus x zeros? Well, all you need to tell me is where the ones go, and then I instantly know where the zeros go. So the first one uh, can go in n to n different random variables. So I can assign the first one to n different random variables. Then I can assign the second one to n minus 1 random variables, so I get n times n minus 1 times all the way down to how many 1s do I have to ascribe? There are x, so I need n minus x minus 1, because if I look at all these terms, this there will be x minus 1 terms here, and then there will be x terms when I add on the n, so that has covered all of these x1s. That's the total number of ways of ascribing the x1s to places. The problem is that um, that takes account of uh, the difference in order that I ascribe them. So I, if I ascribe a one to x, if I ascribe the first one to x1 and then the second one to x2, that's being counted as a different permutation as if I ascribe the first one to x2 and the second one to x1. So I need to then divide it by x factorial to get rid of all the different. Uh, the, the, to get rid of that problem that it's counting the orderings at the moment. And this is the total number of ways of um, permuting x1s and n minus x zeros. And this is often written n choose x. So that's the total number of ways of ascribing x1s and n minus x zeros to these n ran little n random variables. Okay, uh, so for each of those outcomes, 
uh, for each of those specific outcomes now. So we're saying we have fixed a permutation now. We're saying uh, the probability that um, uh, what we've done is we were trying to work out this, the probability that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to xn was equal to some little x. We've worked out that there are n choose x possible ways of ascribing the x1s to these n random variables and the n minus x zeros to these n random variables. Uh, so we've worked out that that's the number of permutations. Now let's say we've got a specific permutation. So let's say it's x1 was going to equal 1, x2 was going to equal a 1 as well, x3 was going to equal 1, and then there were some zeros. Let's say xn was a 0. And overall, as I say, this added up to you had x1s and n minus x zeros. So we have a specific permutation. Uh, well, this is going to be the probability that x1 is equal to 1, and x2 is equal to uh, 1, and x3 is equal to 1, and all the way up to xn is equal to whatever value it was given. Now, because they're all independent, we can split this up into the probability that x1 is equal to 1, times the probability that x2 is equal to 1, etc., all the way down to the probability that xn is equal to 0. Okay, but the probability that x1 is equal to 1 is just equal to p. So the probability, because that's the uh, probability that the first egg hatches. Uh, so that's p. And the probability that x2 is equal to 1 is again equal to p. And you're going to have x lots of these uh, probability that xi is equal to 1. So you get overall uh, p to the power of x. And then you're going to have n minus x zeros, and the probability that those uh, that though that that, a ra that any random variable x i is equal to zero is going to be equal to q. So you're going to get q to the power of n minus x because that's how many uh, zeros you wanted. And basically, what you have to realize is that it did not matter how you permuted these ones and zeros. The probability of a specific permutation is always going to be the same. I.e., the probability that x one is equal to one, x two is equal to one, x three is equal to one, x n is equal to zero is the same as the probability that x one is equal to zero, x two is equal to zero, all the way up to let's say x n is now equal to 1, where this is another possibility, another way of permuting the x1s and n minus x zeros amongst these n random variables. Uh, this is still going to equal p to the power of x, q to the n minus x, because you are going to have um, you are going to have x of these random variables needing to be equal to 1, and that, their probability is p, and you're going to have n minus x of these random variables wanting to be 0, and the probability of that happening is q. So overall, the probability that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus all the way up to xn is equal to little x is equal to uh, the probability of a single outcome, so px, q, n minus x, summed up over every possible permutation of the one of the x ones and n minus x zeros every permutation but as I say uh, the probability of any permutation is just this so this is just equal to how many of these permutations did we have times this probability of a single one which is just we had n choose x so we get that the probability of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus little xn uh, equaling little x is equal to n choose x p to the x, q to the n minus x. Uh, so that is the probability that big X is equal to some little x. So there, there what we have is, um, is the um, probability mass function uh, for uh, how many eggs uh, actually hatch uh, conditional on you knowing the number of eggs. So if you know the number of eggs, if that's little n, then this is the probability uh, that little x of those will hatch. So, uh, the, um, so, what we can now do is uh, we wanted to know uh, the distribution of big X on, um, on our whole probability space. So, uh, if we go back to our picture, we had this. So, I'll draw it again. Uh, so, uh, we had um, a chicken laying a certain number of eggs, and we don't know how many eggs she laid. So, she could have laid zero eggs, she could have laid one egg, she could have laid two eggs, or etc. And basically, she could take on any number of eggs uh, between zero and potentially countably infinity. And so uh, it can take on any non negative uh, integer value. So we've got this random variable, big N, which is ascribing you 
a, a number between 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So each outcome in this, out, in this probability space, and remember these are not the outcomes, these are our events. Each of these contains outcomes, so if she lays one egg, there are two outcomes in there, either it could hatch or it could not hatch. If she lays two eggs, there are uh, the possibility that both could hatch, uh, one, the first could hatch, the second could not hatch, the second could not hatch, the first could hatch, sorry, the sec first could not hatch and the second could hatch, or both of them could not hatch, etc. These are the individual outcomes grouped together in this event, which is the event that she laid two eggs. Okay, uh, so uh, now what you're doing is ascribing each of these outcomes in here, for instance, you describe all of these outcomes, the number two, which is the number of eggs she in total laid for in that outcome. Okay. Uh, so we also said that M was Poissonly distributed lambda, which meant that she laid on average lambda eggs. So the probability that big N is equal to some little n is equal to uh, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the N over N factorial. Okay, uh, now what we want to do is we've got a random variable big X, which is ascribing to every little outcome, not every of these events, it's ascribing to every outcome a number uh, ranging from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., or all the non-negative integers, which is, it's ascribing to each outcome how many of the eggs hatched. Okay, so what we would like to work out is what is the probability that big X is equal to some little x for this. Well, what we can do is apply the law of total probability. We can say we're going to partition, we're going to partition this overall probability space up into these events uh, that she lays a certain fixed number of eggs, just as I've drawn it here. So we're going to partition up the set uh, like this, and we can say by the law of total probability that the sum over all of these partitions, uh, which I could write, um, well, I'll just write, write it, the sum over all partitions, partitions, and then it's the probability uh, that uh, x is equal to little x given that n is equal to some little value n times the probability that big N is equal to some little n. So what we're basically saying is uh, e take each of these partitions, so let's say here, uh, which is the out event that she lays little n x. Work out the probability that big X is equal to little x conditional on big N having equal little n, i.e. what's the probability that little x of the eggs will hatch given that she laid n eggs. Well, we've just calculated that up here. This is this thing here, okay? And then multiply that to scale it back up into the whole probability space. What you need to do is multiply it by the probability of this entire event here happening within the entire probability space, basically. Uh, so that scales it back down. It demotes it, basically, from being viewed as the whole probability space to being viewed just as an event of this bigger probability space. Okay, and then we need to sum over all partitions, which is effectively summing over little n is equal to zero to infinity. Okay, so if we do this, it's the sum from little n is equal to zero to infinity of put in this uh, conditional uh, conditional probability, conditional PMF, which is up here, n choose x, uh, p to the x, q to the n minus x, and then what we need to do is times it by the probability that big N is equal to little n, which is over here, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n over n factorial. Okay, and uh, we will cut it there for now.